when it comes to four to 20 milliamp signals, figuring out whether you need a two wire setup or a four wire setup is one of the most difficult tasks. Let's talk about the difference in the two connections and what you'll see if you connect them wrong. Here I have the four to 20 milliamp meter off of our PLC trainer. And I have the PLC tools SIM ALB2 4 to 20 milliamp analog simulator. So this can simulate a two wire or a four wire device. And the key is we have to have a power supply in our circuit. So when you're looking at your circuit, think about it. Okay, can this be a power supply? Is there any power inside of it? Okay, that can't be it. Okay, can this be a power supply? Well, yeah, in this case, it has the two batteries and we're able to simulate it. And the most difficult part may be the terms we use because here we have two wire, here we have four wire, here we have a current loop, here we have a current source, here we have externally powered, here we have internally powered, here we have passively powered, and here we have actively powered. These terms are used interchangeably. So if we were measuring a wall outlet here in the United States, we could say we have 120 volt. We could say we have 110 volt. We could say we have 115 volt. That's what this is almost. This is 110, 115, 120, 125 volts. So you may have a wiring diagram that tells you you need a two wire connection. You may have a sensor that talks about a current loop and you may have a PLC input that says it's passively powered. So these terms are gonna be completely used interchangeably. Now let's talk about how we're wiring these two because here's where the confusion really comes in. In the case of a two wire device, we need an external power supply. This will very typically be 24 volt DC, but it could be something else. And we're gonna feed positive power up to the milliamp plus of our sensor. We're going to come out of the milliamp minus of our sensor to our analog input, which will typically be our PLC input. Could be the plus on a meter also. And then we're going to take the common back around to the minus. Now, if it's a four-word device, it's going to be externally powered. It could be 24-volt DC powered. It could be 24-volt AC powered. It could be a solar powered. It could be 12,000-volt powered. But mainly, it's powered somehow, somewhere else. And it's going to generate the entire loop or be the current source. And in this case, the positive milliamp will go to the analog in and the minus milliamp will go to the common. So notice here, analog in is going to the milliamp minus. Here, analog in is going to the milliamp plus. And you're probably confused by now. And this is about where everybody's at in my class when we get to this exercise. But the thing you have to think about is what type of signal is this? Because we're so used to thinking voltage, but a four to 20 milliamp signal is a current signal. So if we take that positive power is coming out of our power supply, such as conventional electron flow, it's gonna flow out of the positive, into the milliamp plus, out of the milliamp plus to the analog in, out of the common and back around to the minus of our power supply. In this case, it's generating the entire signal. So it's going to come out of the milliamp plus into the analog in, out of the common, right back to the power supply. So from a current perspective, we are wired the exact same way. Now let's take our analog simulator and let's just start with current two wire. So I'm gonna select two wire and I am going to put the blue wire on my red post. And then I'm gonna put my white wire under the black post. And on my meter, my positive milliamp is terminal one, my negative is terminal two. So I'll put my blue wire into terminal one and I'll put my white wire into terminal two. And now if I begin bringing my meter up, you see immediately we're getting open wire over here and we're getting nothing over here. Since this is a current signal, the open wire is mostly determined by, can I get current through the circuit? Now, 
Since I did not put a power supply in the circuit, such as a two-wire device would need, then it can have no current and we're getting the open wire. I need this to be the power supply. So that means this needs to run in current source mode in order to do this. So I'm gonna hit cancel, we go to current source mode, and now I bring my signal up and it works fine because we have a power supply in our loop now and we didn't before. All right, now let's do the opposite. I'm going to run the analog simulator in current source mode, but I am gonna wire it for a two wire connection. That way we have our PLC trainer's power supply and the external power supply in the same loop. To do that, we're gonna take the plus 24 volt to our milliamp plus, and then we're gonna take the minus milliamp over to our analog in, and then we're gonna take the common back. So this will be my PLC trainer's power supply. This is gonna to go to the black post on our PLC trainer. Then we're gonna take the red post and keep it on the analog input. And analog input, which is pin one, and we'll take pin two back to the minus of our PLC trainer's power supply. Now we'll select current source. And notice right away, it says high voltage right here. And so that means that say analog simulator is saying, I have way too much voltage because I have my internal power supply voltage and I have this PLC trainer's power supply voltage and I'm not gonna let you do it. Whether you have no power supply of the loop or you have two on the loop, you're gonna run into problems. Now, since I'm using the PLC trainer's power supply, in this case, it needed to be in two wire mode. And now it'll run up and down just fine. While you're at it, did you know that in the analog simulator, while you're simulating a value, if you press the OK button, you have the sweep cycle, the step cycle, and the custom profile? Here's a playlist with videos on those features.